throughout my time uh, in school, I've been able to research projects related to our environment and our oceans. And to think that I'll be able to do that as my future is really exciting for me. And this scholarship is just one step closer to be able to do that for the rest of my life. Thank you all for being here. Yeah. And thank you guys for the So much to all of our scholars. I'm looking forward to hearing more about your careers as, as they progress. Um, I would also like to recognize the Foundation for Geauga Park has given us a grant that has funded one of the scholarships this year. So thank you very much. We have uh, Jeff Hyde in the back, the chairman of um, the Foundation for Geauga Park. And we truly appreciate it. Of the Heroes Awards. Uh, can David Malmquist, will you come up to present for Ann Malmquist? Thank you. I'm Dave Malmquist. I'm Ann's oldest son. I fled this area in um, 1973 for Michigan, but I do have my heart here, both in Chagrin Falls, where I went to school, and Jarrett County, where I lived for many, many years. But um, as many of you know, I'm here with my sister Catherine and my brother Eric. And um, the, uh, um, my mother was not one to be trifled with. As they <laughs> might have known her, um, she wanted to do things her way, and she liked to control everyone and everything around her. And so when these uh, frackers and well drillers came into the area and started leaving behind all kinds of polluted debris behind, she decided to take them on. And I think that's one of the reasons why she's known for what she did, and that was to go after these guys. And um, they still do fracking in this area. I think they still do drilling. But I think they're a little bit better about cleaning up after themselves. I don't know. Again, I'm not, I don't live here. I've been in Michigan for the last 46 years. So, um, but um, as children, my mother would haul us out into the whole Arboretum and to our property, you know, for Sugarbush Lane there and walk the woods and she would identify trees for us and wildflowers and birds and to this day i can drive down a freeway at 80 miles an hour with people in my car <laughs> and i can say ah a sugar maple a cottonwood <laughs> a sassafras tree and they're all in the car like how, how can you do that you know and i said well it just drilled into me at an early age you know i just know it. i can see them from a distance and i can pick them out but to that end, uh, my mother was um, an ardent conservationist and naturalist and loved the natural world, the wildflowers, the birds, you name it. And um, I think she would be very honored to receive this award. However, knowing my mother, she was probably glowering at all of us right now, saying, oh, how could you? But anyway, she was um, quite the person to know, and she did a great job at what she was dedicated to doing, which is protecting the environment. So, um, Rick, can you want to come Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, in honor of your mom, Ann Malmquist, um, we would protect you at the park, we would love to pretend, project, in providing you with this plaque, and also the, the Heroes Post. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. was right is my mother never liked awards and if she knew she was getting this award she tried to tell people forget it don't do it <laughs> she liked to be behind the scenes she really was very adamant about conservation um, from when she was a child all the way up to when she ended up in the nursing home from Parkinson's disease she really loved nature and it wasn't just going as the as someone said the Brian Patrol going after them almost single-handedly. And in those days, women wore skirts, so she had a blue skirt on and white shirt on and tennis shoes, and she would go after them 
just charging after them, trying to get evidence to stop them. But she also did things with the Native Plant Society. She worked with Jim Bissell at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History to conserve land. She did a lot. She worked with the Holden Arboretum, got that wildflower garden going. She did a lot, and because she felt that if we didn't protect what we have now, where would we be in the future? And so she was very adamant that we protect our land, our animals, and our plants. I'd like to hear from Dan Best to present to, uh, uh, an award for Dwayne Ferris. Come on up, Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Well, it was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> it was, or it had been. There we were, Dwayne and I, some years ago, probably in the 90s, I don't know. We had, we had signed on to be... Uh, in this marsh monitoring citizen science program, and we were there at uh, just east of um, 608 Middlefield Township, uh, in, on the edge of the Terre Creek Marsh, listening for frogs and toads, whatever was calling. That's what we were there to do, and um, it was uh, it was a magnificent night. It was, you know, we if you're looking to the east, the sky was still flashing lightning over Trumbull County. In the west, it had cleared. It was a starry night. And in the north sky was Comet Hale Bob. And I can't remember what Dwayne and I said to each other. If anything, we just looked at each other like, wow. <laughs> this is it. Well, I met uh, Dwayne in the early to mid-1980s after moving to Chardon. I was still working for Shaker Lakes Regional Nature Center, but had joined the Blackbrook Audubon Society, the Burroughs Nature Club. And... Uh, Probably by then they began to uh, get involved in the Native Plant Society, and I began volunteering for Geauga Park District. Dwayne was one of the, the tall trees of nature and conservation in Geauga County, along with Bob McCullough, um, as uh, Rich mentioned so well, past recipient of the Heroes of Conservation Award, and Don Meyer, the revered first director of Geauga Park District, who I had the privilege of working for. When I was hired by Java Park District in 1987, for what would be the last three months of Don's life, Dwayne had been Java Park District's first naturalist, as stated. Starting in 1968, he was a part-timer. He was still uh, working full-time as science teacher at Kenston High School. Uh, uh, Dwayne's tenure as naturalist during the what was then the, the dynamic formative years of Java Park District, back in the... Uh, late 60s and 70s, um, he, uh, he established, along with Bob McCullough, the first programming, I think as Rich mentioned, bird and wildflower walks, outdoor movie nights, and listed speakers for programs that were held in high school auditoriums, and Dwayne published the Green Diamond, Java Park District's first newsletter. Dwayne established the Ruth Kennan Trail with its naturally occurring flora augmented by additional plantings to provide a rich assortment of textures and scents to enable the visually impaired to enjoy nature along an obstacle-free paved trail that also uh, accommodated the those with mobility impairments. This project was years ahead of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Dwayne established the next Nest Box program that enhanced watchable wildlife opportunities to the delight of park visitors. The next Nest Box program continues to this day, owing its long-standing success to dedicated um, Nest Box monitors, long since dubbed the Box Docs, for the house calls they make on nesting louvers and tree swaths. Now, in 1979, a heart attack forced Dwayne into retirement. Nate Fink, another recipient of the Heroes of Conservation Award, took over for Dwayne as Park Naturalist to retirement. However, did very little to diminish Duane's energy and enthusiasm, nor curb his involvement with Geauga Park District. As a very active volunteer, he remained devoted to Geauga Park District and the cause of conservation and nature preservation until the end of his life. Duane maintained a vital advisory role with the Park Board and Park Directors. He and Bob McCullough were partners in investigating potential park lands, which came to be some of our most treasured nature reserves. Dwayne's zeal for nature and conservation was his hallmark. 
Those who had the pleasure of being on a nature walk or a horse-drawn wagon ride at Swine Creek Reservation. Now the wagon with its easily boarded low-tiered seating was another one of Dwayne's initiatives to get the elderly and infirm out into nature. Or veterans of his Wednesday Walkers hiking group for retirees, the precursor of today's Jogga Walkers program. Many of these folks would readily admit to being infected with Dwayne's enthusiasm for the natural world. Dwayne's sharing of nature knowledge was never a dry encyclopedic recitation or, or pompous professorial delivery.